Uh, hello learners. Uh, today we're going to be dealing with uh, magnetic bearing and I promise another short session so that you can download easily. So let's get going. All right. Uh, the first one that we will be looking at, or the first thing that we'll be looking at is the formula. And we know magnetic bearing is equal to true bearing plus magnetic declination. So we have to do it in three steps. First, we'll have to calculate the true bearing. Secondly, we'll have to calculate the current magnetic declination. And then we add the two to get to the magnetic bearing. Okay, so let's go towards the true bearing. So calculating the true bearing of spot height 156 from spot height 1322. So we're standing here and we there. Okay, so we know we always draw our cross on the from point and we measure from the true north. Okay, in a clockwise direction. That's how we calculate our true bearing from the true north in a clockwise direction. So another important thing is to note when we're using our calc our protractor, we must make sure the zero point is on the true north line. The true north line I'm referring to is the line down here. So our protractor must be there. And when we work out the 180 and then we flip the calculate at the protractor and of course our zero line at the bottom here, and then we measure the rest of it and add it up to give us our total true bearing. So remember again, these ones or these maps are exaggerated, so it's not the real scale. And when I measured from here to there, uh, I will have got an answer of 213 degrees. That then is my true bearing. Okay. Then I need to work out my magnetic declination. On the side of the topographic map, you will find this information appearing, okay? It will tell you here, it will show you uh, a little arrow on the side showing you the magnetic uh, declination area, all right? And you know when this moves uh, westwards, it gets bigger, so we add. And when this line moves eastwards, it gets smaller and we subtract. So let's look at the information we have here. It says there, and I want to highlight that, it's 15 degrees, 57 minutes for 1997. And for every year, it changes two minutes westwards, means it increases by two minutes westwards for each year. So we're going to use this information to calculate the current magnetic declination. So let's go on with it. Let's look at the next thing. So the first thing I need to know, I had 1997. We know it's 2020 at the moment. So I have to find out what is my difference in years. And I take this minus this and I've got 23 years. I get a mark for that. Then I need to indicate what was my mean annual change. And I take it directly from the information. It was two minutes westwards. Just for writing that, I get a mark. Eventually, I had to work out my total change from 1997 to 2020. And of course, I multiply the number of years in terms of the difference in years and the mean annual change which gives me an answer of 46 minutes. So I take then the one that you noticed on the information. It was 15 degrees, 57 minutes. And I add my add total change, which is 46 minutes westwards. I get an answer of 15 degrees, 103 minutes. Remember, I can't keep my answer like this. 
I have to convert. If it's more than 660 or more, I have to convert it to degrees. So I find 60 goes into this once. This becomes 16. I'm left with a remainder of 43 minutes. So my magnetic declination now is 16 degrees, 43 minutes west of true north. Please note, learners, I have to indicate the west and I have to indicate the true north. So it tells me, please note, you can't just write west. It can be W of true north or W of TN, but you have to indicate the true north. Okay, so now I have worked out both the true bearing and the magnetic declination. I come down here. So my magnetic declination is in this area. It was 16 degrees, 43 minutes. It's an angle between the true north and the magnetic north. And of course, my uh, true bearing was 213 degrees. Okay, so my next step would be to then to do the final thing, and that is the calculation of the magnetic bearing, which is 213 degrees plus 16 degrees, 43 minutes, which then gives me a total of 229 degrees, 43 minutes, and I get marked for that. Now, let's look at how it will look in the, if I write it in exam. So, I've got my true bearing. I then show all my steps in terms of the uh, magnetic declination because I'm getting marks and eventually I show my magnetic bearing answer. And this then completes the exam format and I would get around seven marks for answering this if this came out as a question. Eventually, Exam type questions on the application of this. I can ask a question, explain the importance of calculating the current magnetic declination or bearing for a hiker. It can be declination or bearing to a hiker. And one of the things is if you don't have the correct magnetic declination or bearing, all right, uh, the hiker is using the map and he's walking in a certain direction. If he doesn't have this for the current, he's using 1997, he will never reach his destination or he will get lost, all right? Uh, he'll go in the incorrect direction. Whatever your answer is saying that he won't be in the correct, or going in the correct direction or getting lost, okay? And that's simply your calculation for magnetic bearing. Keep well, all the best.